Entertainment. Welcome to Three Count Commentaries. And it seems that we have stepped in Nick Khan's very first mistake. He hired a man by the name of Lee Fitting to take Kevin Dunn's spot as head of production. And then two or three days later, this guy is exposed as a fraudster that was involved with the ESPN scandal. Oh, brother. Let's get right into it. So as we know, at the end of 2023, Kevin Dunn, longtime WWE production head, retires. He leaves the company after over 40 years in the company. Now, he became very suspicious as people were asking questions, why? Then we find out that Mark Shapiro, the new production head for Endeavor after the company is sold to Endeavor, uh, basically goes online and basically says, hey, you know, we know that there is always these these guys who try to protect every camera and every tape machine. We're trying to make money here. We don't we don't need all this stuff. And then shortly thereafter, Kevin Dunn leaves. And then shortly thereafter that, they hired this man named Lee Fitting. So it is announced on January the 9th, 2024, WWE announces Lee Fitting to lead media and production. It says, uh, uh, Lee is a phenomenal leader and executive known for work that generates both critical acclaim and mass appeal, said WWE President Nick Khan. Lee will be a tremendous addition to our stellar media and production team and play a key role in helping catapult WWE's growth. Fitting brings more than two decades of production experience to WWE from ESPN, where he oversaw production for tentpole properties, including Monday Night Football, College Game Day, the College Football Playoff, and many other properties within the Disney portfolio. Distributed in 25 languages and 165 countries, they start putting over WWE. We don't need to go through that. So Lee Fitting <clears throat> comes over from ESPN because Nick Khan loves sports. He loves sports. That's his thing. Of course, nobody asked the question. I mean, Kevin Dunn had been there for 40 years. Why was there nobody put in position to take over when he retired? Instead, you hired from outside the company. Usually, if somebody retires, you move somebody from inside the company up. But instead, they brought in this guy from outside the company. And then it promptly bit them in the ass. January the 11th, literally two days later, ESPN operated 13-year Emmy scheme using fake names to get awards for top talent. And guess who was involved in this? If you said Lee Fitting, you are absolutely correct. So the ESPN, this is from the New York Post. ESPN had operated a scheme since 2010 by submitting the names of fake individuals with the same initials as their stars under the guise of associate producers, re-engraving the statuettes, and then delivering them to their on-air personalities per the report. The scheme helped secure hardware for the on-air talent behind the success of College Game Day. Huh. How about that? The hosts were not eligible to be honored for a Best Show Award until 2023 because there are separate categories for individual awards. Um, ESPN said, quote, some members of our team were clearly wrong in submitting certain names. They may go back to 1997 in Emmy categories where they were not eligible for recognition or statuettes. This was a misguided attempt to recognize on-air individuals who were important members of our production team. Holy, holy, holy hell. We don't have to go through all the people that were affected because I think most of the on-air talent who got a fake Emmy didn't know that they got a fake Emmy. And I don't think like, embarrassing them really is, it's not their fault. They didn't know. But Lee Fitting knew. Lee, 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 Lee Fitting. Lee Fitting knew. ESPN's punishment Included the returning of the trophies, a one-year ban from the Emmys for senior leadership, which probably should be permanent, along with two individuals, ESPN executive Craig Lazarus and former ESPN employee and college game day executive Lee Fitting being named ineligible for future Emmys. Ah, the scheme played a role in why Emmy Fitting 
who was a senior vice president of production is now with WWE, was let go by ESPN this past August, according to the Post, Andrew Marchand. It's uh, ex. <laughs> so they hired this guy right after he was <laughs> ESPN found out he was a fraud. They fired him. And then WWE hires him, touts him as being this guy who knows all this stuff. He's so good. And then they the ones get caught holding the hot potato of this guy who is clearly in the middle of smack dab in the middle of a fraud. It's, it's entertaining at the very least, even if you're not that interested in it. It's very entertaining that WWE, a business that has had its fair share of scandal. Now is getting caught with the hot potato of somebody else's scandal. It's amazing. It's the same thing with Logan Paul and him getting busted being a scam artist while he's wrestling on WWE television. They've been taking a lot of L's. It is not, it's not direct. They're indirect L's. And like, as soon as Logan Paul really becomes a, a fixture in WWE, CoffeeZilla and all these people out him as a scam artist. And then they just kind of have to act like it didn't happen. You know, that's his personal issue. Um, now they have to deal with this thing. This guy is the production head of WWE. And he got busted. He can, well, WWE never wins Emmys anyway. So you can pretty much throw that out. It's not going to matter in his career. I don't think this has anything to do with his ability to do his job. But it does have a lot to do with his credibility, his reputation. And these things matter. You know, as wrestling fans, we're used to certain levels of scumbaggery in wrestling but this is different this is you know, this is espn scumbaggery that we're not dealing with here also very ironic that espn is outed as a huge fraud in the middle of the jason whitlock stephen a smith beef in which jason whitlock is basically saying that stephen a smith is a plant and that a lot of the his a lot of his stories are lies and that espn is you know, utilizing him to push agendas, et cetera, et cetera. And now we see that ESPN has gone so far as to give fake awards. Well, real awards to fake people who they then renamed for their real on-air talent. Very bizarre. And their new hire, WWE's new hire, is in the middle of this thing. So wrestling fans didn't even get an opportunity to complain about the guy yet. We haven't, I don't think we've seen a show that this guy, I mean, he's been there for, he was there for two days before this stuff happened. So he hasn't had an opportunity to produce anything that people are willing to complain about yet. And we're already busted with this guy who was a fraud. Very entertaining. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below and I'll talk to you guys later, man. Peace out.